This lesson deals with an example that uses series and parallel equivalent resistances to solve for unknown currents. You can find this example in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter two, starting on page 30. Suppose we have a circuit with four resistances and a voltage source. We want to solve for the current I sub S, I1, and I2. Be handy to solve for I sub S because you could use this to predict the life of the battery. Let's start at the right hand side of the equation and let's reduce this to an equivalent resistance and then solve for the current I sub S by taking the voltage, 12 volts, and dividing by the equivalent resistance that we find. Starting with this schematic, we see that these two resistances share the same current. So we could replace them by a single resistance whose value is 3000 plus 6000, or 9K. Now in the process, we've actually eliminated node C. Now this circuit is equivalent to this one, but not identical to it. Take these two resistances in parallel and replace them by a single resistance by taking the product over the sum of 18K and 9K. It turns out to be 6K. You can replace this series combination by a single resistance whose value is the sum of 6,000 plus 4,000. So reduce this to a one loop circuit. Now the voltage across the resistance is 12 volts, divide by 10K and we get 1.2 milliamps. Okay, now this equivalent circuit has really eliminated all but the nodes A and D. I need to go back into the circuit to find the other two currents. Well, we can do that. We now can go back to our previous step where we had the parallel combination giving us 6,000 ohms and now I use the fact that I know this current is 1.2 milliamps to find the voltage between nodes B and D. And that would be 1.2 milliamps times 6K. Now the milli and the K cancel and just get uh, 6 times 1.2 or 7.2. Now let's go back to the original drawing. This is 1.2 milliamps and the voltage across here is 7.2 volts. All right, the current that's flowing in here then just by Ohm's law would be 7.2 volts divided by 18K and that turns out to be 0.4 milliamps. Again, I can put my answers into engineering notation that would be 400 microamps. Now if the current entering here is 1.2 milliamps and what's leaving is 0.4 milliamps, then there must be 0.8 left over. Sometimes you can just do Kirchhoff's current law right on the schematic. The numbers are sometimes easy enough that you can just look at it and write the answer down. If you don't like that, you can just go back and do Kirchhoff's current law here. 1.2 milliamps is entering, I1 and I2 are leaving, and we know the value of I1, so then we could subtract that from here and get I2. Then you get 0.8 milliamps, and again, I put that in engineering notation as 800 microamps. Although we saw for the things that we were asked for, take a look at uh, one other idea. Let's go back and use the information that we have to find every voltage and every current in the circuit. Okay, the 1.2 milliamps that I had, I could multiply by the 4,000 ohms that are here and get the voltage across it. Again, the milli and the K cancel, and so I have four times 1.2, which is 4.8. We knew this voltage was 7.2. We know the current in here was 0.4 milliamps. The current flowing in here is 0.8 milliamps, so we could then multiply 0.8 times 3K, again, the milli and the Ks cancel, and I get 2.4. Likewise here, I could take the 0.8 milli times the 6K, and again, the milli and the K cancel, and I get 4.8 volts. Lastly, let's find the current that's going into the plus terminal of the 12 volt source. In other words, a passive sign convention. Well, if this current is 1.2 milliamps and the current going the other way is minus 1.2. Let's take a look at some interesting properties here. Rise in voltage is 12 around this loop, 4.8 and 7.2, but the sum of these is actually equal to 12. Go around this loop, the rise in voltage is 7.2, the drop is 2.4 and 4.8. The sum of these two is equal to 7.2. If I go around the outer loop, the rise in voltage is 12, drop is 4.8, 2.4, and 4.8. If you add those up, you get 12. Across laws, voltage and current, true at every instant in time, no matter what the example is. Let's take a look back at our observation of power. The battery is absorbing 12 times minus 1.2 milliamps, and that's 14.4 milliwatts. 4K resistance, we can calculate as power absorption by taking the voltage times the current, or we could take the voltage squared divided by the resistance, or we could take the current squared times the resistance. Since we already know the voltages and currents of each element, let's just multiply those. So 4.8 times 1.2 milliamps is actually 5.76 milliwatts. 18K, I've got 0.4 milliamps and 7.2 volts. Turns out to be 2.88 milliwatts. 
for the 3K resistance, I've got 0.8 milliamps and 2.4 volts, 1.92 milliwatts. And lastly, for this one, I've got 0.8 milliamps and 4.8. Add all these up here, they're equal to 14.4 milliwatts. So the summation is equal to zero. This is true again at every instant in time for every circuit. This concludes the example that uses equivalent resistances to solve for a variety of variables.